and word of command inherited her responsibility to deal with the Scottish rebellion and his father's substantial debts. My lords and ladies, I am Isabella of France, daughter of King Philip III of France, and I was betrothed to this man, Edward of Carnarvon, when I was eight years old. With the full approval of two very powerful royal households, in 1308, I took Edward of Carnarvon to be my husband. There was great pomp and ceremony. Within weeks, we were crowned King and Queen of England. A less than perfect affair, during no small part to the presence of one Piers Gaveston. Before the coronation festivities were over, it became clear to me that I was not the king's favorite. He preferred the company of his long-term friend, Piers Gaveston, a man much hated by the barons of England, for he was given power, land, and income that he did not deserve. And soon, they could bear it no more. The barons hunted him down and murdered him. And for a while, Edward turned his attention back to England and to me. But the rebellion in Scotland, led by Robert Bruce, is all but complete. And now, England has no choice. It must form an army, and it must reach Stirling Castle before Midsummer's Day, or the garrison there will kneel before the Scots. Okay, you're now going to see the Scottish side told to you by the Black Douglas. That's the one we're doing. Around the year 1290, a series of unfortunate deaths left Scotland in dire need of a rightful heir, a king. King Edward I of England was asked to step in to judge the claims to the throne. But King Edward's intentions were not all they seemed, and Edward invaded Scotland, ruling it as an English province. In 1302, a Scottish aristocrat by the name of Robert Bruce, who had pledged allegiance to Edward, married 13-year-old Elizabeth de Burgh in Essex. Robert held a claim to the Scottish throne, as did his bitter rival, John Comyn. But while Bruce now chose to give his allegiance to Edward I, Comyn led Scottish resistance to the English kingdom. In 1306, Robert Bruce agreed to meet John Comyn at Greyfriars Church in the peace. Tempers flared, and Robert stabbed his rival, leaving his henchmen to finish the job. Outlawed by Edward and excommunicated by the Pope, Robert Bruce defiantly took the throne at school. Who was supporting Robert Bruce? People like me, James Douglas. I needed to get my lands back. Others loathed English taxis and wanted a Scot on our ancient throne. But many in Scotland hated Bruce for killing Comyn and taking Balliol's crown. They fought with Edward to catch this jumped-up murderer. In those days, even I didn't believe the so-called king could get my lands back for me. King Edward's men defeated Robert's army, killed his brother, captured his queen, his sisters, and his daughters. Robert Bruce sought refuge in remote islands where he regained his conviction to fight. Sometime later, he heard of the death of Edward, and over the next six years ran a campaign to gain the support of his countrymen and women, which he accomplished. But his queen, the only one capable of giving him a natural heir, was still imprisoned in England. Robert regained control of most of Scotland, capturing English strongholds one after another, but had yet to take Stirling Castle. Robert's forces lay siege to it. Eventually, the commander in charge agreed to hand over control of the castle if it were not reached by the English army by Midsummer Day, 1314. So the English led by Edward II, marched north to fight. Okay, if everyone would now like to move through to the left.